hey YouTube, for the longest time, I've had kind of a hodgepodge of banners between uh, Twitter, YouTube, and I don't even think I've had a banner on my Twitch channel ever. So I recently created some new, uh, had some new art made for my channel, uh, specifically, you can kind of see it here a little bit. And I want to incorporate that with my image because after all, as a content creator, I want the focus to be on me, not necessarily the game, like this is Division 2, but I end up playing different games. So in this video, I'm going to show you using Ink Inkscape, which I put a link in the description below, how to actually create banners that have a common look and feel across all of your um, social media accounts. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and ding that notification bell so you know when there's new videos. And if you're looking for someone to game with, you can find me and other players in the Militia Discord server. The link is in the description below. Okay, let's just get started. You're gonna end up with a YouTube banner that looks something like this. First thing we wanna do is open up Inkscape. And when you go to File, go to Documents, and let's set the document up. We're gonna change display units to pixels, and we're gonna actually turn off showing the page border. The first banner we're gonna make is a YouTube banner. It's the largest one. So what we wanna first do is go to Layers, change our layer name to Background, because this is what we're, I'm gonna call this the background. This is actually the big square that's gonna represent the background or the document of the banner. So now we're gonna select that rectangle tool. We're gonna to make a big rectangle. Now select that select and transform. And our width is gonna be 2560 by 1440. Now this is the largest that a YouTube uh, banner could be. This is how it would be displayed on a television set, uh, especially a 1440p, all right? So once it's select and transform, we're gonna go align and distribute. We're gonna make sure relative to drawing is selected. Treat selections as grouped. Make sure that's selected. It doesn't matter for this because it's only one object, but in the future it will matter. Make sure you're centered on the page. Now, go to fill and stroke. We're actually gonna do a radial gradient. Select that gradient tool, select the center. Now I have colors already chosen. I have a light blue that I'm gonna put in here. There it is right there. But you wanna put FF at the end, that makes it visible. If it's zero, zero, it's not visible. FF makes it visible. Then select the outside and simply I already had it chosen, so that's my color. I'm gonna put FF here, and we have it. Now, if it's a different color, weird color, make sure your opacity is turned up all the way. Make sure on layers, your opacity is turned up all the way. Um, radial gradient, make sure the opacity is turned up all the way, because sometimes that can mess things up. All right, so our background's all set. Our layer's all set. Lock our background. The next thing I'm gonna do is put a watermark in the back. The watermark is gonna be a my logo, basically. So open up your logo. Make sure all layers are locked. I have three layers on my logo. Select them all. Copy, minimize, add new layer, and we're gonna call it watermark. We're gonna just paste it in there. Now, select and transform tool. Wanna to make sure the aspect ratio is locked. That way it, you, you can change the size, the width and length at the same time without worrying about it getting all skewed looking. So open it up as far as you can. Let's make sure that it's inside the document and that's good. All right, so now here's where it's important. So what we wanna do is align and distribute. Now drawing, and this is where it's important. If this is not selected, example of what happens, right? So make sure this is selected. I'm gonna center on the document and then center that way. Now we have a nice watermark in there, but it's too bright. Go to layers and we're gonna change our opacity for our watermark down to about 25%. percent. So now it's in the background. That looks nice, nice little watermark there. So let's lock that layer up. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little template up here so we know where to place our graphics so that they're displayed on a mobile as well as a TV or a web browser without being cropped or changed. And so you have all your information visible on all three platforms. So what first we're gonna do is add a layer called template. We're gonna draw a square. Yellow is a good color just so it stands out. I'm gonna change the opacity about 25% so it's in the background and things don't, it doesn't like stand out too much. Now, select, select and transform tool and the size we're gonna be, for the, min, the minimal size is gonna be 15, 46. We're gonna to have to uncheck this so that we can actually change the height and weight, uh, height and width at different intervals to 423. It's a funny one, but this is for mobile. So this is how big, it, we, all the graphics that are in here will be displayed on mobile. Anything outside of this will not be displayed on mobile. And if you have a graphic such as my watermark is gonna be cropped off a little bit, which is fine. 
Now go to land, align and distribute, and we're gonna actually center on the document. All right, now that we have our template, we know where to put our uh, graphics and our text. Let's do it, put our first piece of uh, our graphic out here, which is gonna be an image of myself. I actually saved an image, copy your image, go layers, I'm gonna lock the template, we're gonna add, we'll call it image. And we're simply just gonna paste it in here. All right, so it's, if yours is turned um, the wrong way, like such as mine, is you can go up here and just rotate the whole um, image. All right, so I'm gonna do basically right below the shoulders, like a bust um, of my, so we gotta actually outline it. And we're gonna use a Bezier tool to do this. I'm gonna go quickly through this, uh, speed it, because it just takes a long time. But uh, I've done this in other uh, tutorials, so I'll leave a link in the description below on uh, the video and timestamp of how I explain how to use the Bezier tool. All right, now that we actually have it all outlined, we're gonna actually select our edit path by nodes, and we're gonna make it look a little nicer because there's gonna be some hard edges. First thing we wanna do is fill in strokes. We're gonna actually change the stroke paint to white so we can actually see it. Style, let's do pixels and increase it to like three so we can actually see it. Now I'm also gonna speed through this, but basically all I'm doing is, as you can see, these are hard edges. We're gonna delete them and round it out more. That's good enough. Now, once we have it all outlined and where we basically want the outline, I'm gonna right click images, duplicate layer, image copy, but we're gonna change this to border. We're actually gonna move the image, the, we're gonna lower the layer, we're gonna lock it, and we're gonna hide it. Now go back to image, we're gonna use this, we're gonna select our line, select the transform tool, holding shift down, click outside of the box, the image itself, then we're going to go object, clip, set. And that basically deletes everything else except what we did. Now, you can see this in white here. It doesn't really matter because guess what? We're going to close this, hide it, unlock this, image border, display it. We're going to select outside. So all we want is the border. So we're going to select outside and we're going to delete. Now we have our border. Now we're going to still in stroke, select our nodes tool. And then we're stroke style. We're going to go four. I think four is what I want and then go back to layers, show the image, and now we have that. But now it's, it's very large. So select and transform tool, make sure image and image border are both unlocked. I like them both. Now you wanna make sure you lock the aspect so that the height and weight goes down together proportionately. And this doesn't be perfect because we're actually gonna do some more work to it. All right, the last thing I wanna do to this image before we lock them is, Let's lock the image border. I actually, I believe the image actually looks a little too bright. I want to blend in more. So we select our image layer, select our image, we're on layers. We're gonna turn the opacity down to about 84% is what I thought looked pretty good. So it gives it a little bit more of a blue tint. It kind of blends in. If you see, if we hide, like, hide this, see how it kind of blends in with the blue. So that's what we're gonna go with. Now simply just lock the image itself and we're good to go for now. All right, now that we have our image in there, we wanna put our channel name right below the image. So let's go ahead and add a new layer called channel name. And we're gonna actually open up the artwork for the channel name. So here's my channel name. I gotta make sure I have three layers for it, dark blue, orange, and light blue, make sure they're all locked. And I'm gonna highlight all of them. Copy them, minimize this. Now make sure channel name is, and paste. All right, so aspect ratio is all set. Shrink it down. Zoom in a little bit. Move this over. Shrink a little bit more. And I just wanna make it look like it kind of about the same size. Now, as you can see, there's a white, light, white outline around me. I wanna put a white outline around the, the name too. So. How I'm gonna do this, mine's in three layers, so I have to delete two of the layers before I can do it. So what we wanna do is channel name, duplicate layer. We're gonna lower this layer. We're gonna lock the top one. We're gonna hide it. I got channel name, copy. We're gonna call this border as well. I have the layer selected. My select and transform tool, I'm gonna click here, delete the yellow. 
and I'm going to delete the dark blue. And I'm just going to be with the light blue, which is what is going to help me outline mine. Yours may be a single layer and it'll work, work fine just with the way it is. So now we want to, mine's actually already an object. So I can select it, fill in stroke. I can stroke, add it, make it white. It's white stroke style. I'm going to put the four, just like the image of me. Now I'll go back to layers and we unhide this select and we have it looks nice. All right. Now that we actually have our channel name artwork and our image art, we want to center, we want to shrink it down a little bit. So it fits within the template and also center it. So we're going to unlock all, make sure we unlock all those layers, highlight them all, right? Now we're going to shrink it a little bit. So select and transform tool where aspect ratio is locked. So we're going to select it like this. We'll raise it up a little bit. I'm going to make it bigger this way and shrink it down. Okay. Now align distribute. Once again, treat as group, center it, center it here, and we're good to go. Now our artwork is all centered, layers, lock everything, hide our template, and this is what we got so far. Looks pretty good. Now, since it's our YouTube banner, we actually want to put our Twitch URL in here so it helps people direct them towards Twitch if they find us on YouTube. So let's go back in here, show the template, put a channel name, add a layer above, and we'll call it Twitch. Now we're simply going to select the text object tool. We're going to select our font. I like bangers. I've used it in the past. I'm going to click here and we're going to type twitch. Dot TV slash Danny property. Select and transform tool. Now fill in stroke. Fill color is going to be white. Make sure our aspect ratio is done and we're going to make this as big as we can so that it fits in and looks nice. All right. Now it's a little too white for me. So we know it's going to fit in there. So if we hide our layer, our template, right? I think the white's a little too bright. So what we're going to do is actually opacity. And we're going to bring this down to about 50%. That was almost 50% there. 50%. Now there you have it. Lock that layer. So we basically have the banner set up the way we want to. And you can add in sponsors. Um, you could change URLs, put different URLs in there if you want to. Do you have Instagram and things like that? Change your image around. But this is the basic gist of what I would suggest you have. Uh, make sure it fits in here so that it's mobile. You could put other things out here if you don't care that it's shown on mobile. But I would suggest all your main text and your images fit within this template. Now you should definitely save it so you can use it in the future. So file, save as, and Go to my desktop for now. You say where you want to. You call it YouTube banner. Save it. Then we're going to export it. So this allows us to export it as a PNG as opposed to an SVG. So you're going to export as first to create a um, name, a file name. Mine's going to be YouTube banner. I'm going to save that. That's just saving the file name. We still have to hit export button. Now it actually exported it to the desktop. If we minimize this, we can see here's our saved SVG, and then here's our actual banner. Now you just have to go to YouTube and put this into your, uh, as your banner. That ends part one, which is making a YouTube banner. In part two, I'm going to cover transforming this banner into a Twitter and Twitch banner. I just felt like this video is getting too long, so we'll split it up in two pieces. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button below. And if you have any questions or even a suggestion on how to do things a bit easier in Inkscape, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear them. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please smash that subscribe button. And you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash maniocrity, where I stream Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time, YouTube, take it easy.